If you are using MongoDB for your own project, then it's fine to use a standalone database. And especially if you are just starting to learn and use databases. But once you are working production, standalone database is not a good option. If something goes wrong or the server crashes or become unavailable, that can be costly. Even if you built a fix-in quickly, it still has some sort of downtime. And downtime is not good. Or, even worse, you might end up corrupting your data, and that's a whole nightmare. Replica sets are to the rescue. Indeed, replica sets are MongoDB way to help you avoid these problems. By running multiple replica or identical copies of your database at once. It does this by having a primary nodes and secondary nodes that will automatically take place of the primary node if something went wrong. Replication also helps you scull your database. On this tutorial, it's going to be a little bit advanced. So I need you to focus with me on everything and feel free to ask for help on the comment section if you did not get any of the command. So, I'm going to use Docker image for Ubuntu to create replica because I have some important databases on my computer and I don't want to mess with that. You can go ahead and use your MongoDB on your PC, but I advise you to use a Docker image if you are practicing and you don't want to mess with your databases. So I have a Docker image of Ubuntu if you want to know more about Docker and how to create images, you can watch my video about it. So before I start this tutorial, let me just clarify for you that I already installed MongoDB on my Docker image. And I did this using the following command. As you can see, MongoDB is already in the newest version. First, let me just explain for you what I'm going to be doing on this tutorial. So I'm going to create three replica sets on my host here. On production, you will do this on three separate hosts or servers. Then I'm going to connect to use the replica set that I created. Here I have one tab. So let's open up three more. And I'm just going to connect to the containers. The first thing I'm going to do is make a place for the data files to live. So in my route here, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder named store with another folder called data inside it. And then I can go ahead and create three separate folders, one for each of my replica set members. So now we have three directories in here. Next, to run a version of MongoDB in each of three terminals, we're going to run a special command. So we are going to run mongo and give it their repulsit command. And we need to give it a name. Now, this needs to be the same everywhere. And then we set the DB path, which is what we just created. So home store slash data and then the first directory replica one and then we will give it a port because each of these is going to need to run on a different port so i will let this be the default 2717 and we can add extra options at the end here dash dash small files dash dash upload size 200 now we will copy this or note it in a text file so that we can use it on the other replica set and we can run this command you can see that it's waiting for connection on port 27017 let's do that again but this time we will run it on port 18 and we will give it db path replica 2 and everything else will be the same once that starts, you can see that it's listening to connection on port 27018. Lastly, we will create the third replica. Similarly, we will change the port to 19 
Note that the port could be wherever we want, and we change the directory to replica tree. When you run this, you can see that it's waiting for connection on port 19. So, if we run htop, well, you will see multiple versions of MongoDB running over here. So now, we need to tell the other replica that the other one exists. They don't actually know it yet. That means that we don't actually have a replica set yet. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and log into that first one that was running on port 2717 using the following command. Once we are connected, we can give it configuration. So we need to make a variable name here called config. So we need to give it an ID and we are going to make it movie set that we used it earlier and then we need to give it some members which will be an array. It will consist of an object representing each one of these servers that we are running on. So, as we did here, the first one got an ID of 0, the second one got an ID of 1, and the third one got an ID of 2. And then we close everything. As you can see, it spit it out nicely formatted for us. Now, we're going to send that to the command using rs.initiate. So we could tell it run. And it tells us right here that we are on secondary. As you can see here, this prompt changed. Now I can run eris.statue command and it will give us a whole bunch of information about statue sets. There are some other interesting commands that we can run, like db is master, which will give us kind of a smaller summary of this. Now, the most important thing of this course actually is replicating data. So the first thing I'm going to do is to actually log out of this primary and to do that I will just use exit and I'm just going to log into one of those ones that I set as secondary using mongo dash dash port equal 18. So you can see here that the prompt changes to secondary. And if I do show dbs, well, you will see that it says database list is failed, not a master. So the whole point is we can't run commands in here. We also can't write to it. So I will go ahead and exit the secondary and log into the primary. And I'm going to just create a blank document. So I'll do db.test insert one, an empty document. So we run this and it's going to replicate this across our replica sets. So we check all the replica sets, we can see the message that it says something test database, create collection, create collection, create collection. Sweet! Now we have three identical copies of our database. By the way, while they're connected to each MongoDB individually, you can only write to primary again. Lastly, to connect to the replica set properly, you can use a slightly different command. You want to use a connection string, so instead of here connecting via the port, I'm going to do something like this, which is a wall connection string that lists each of the members comma separated of our replica set. And then we're going to say our replica set name is, and then when we connect to that, you can see that it's similar, but it automatically connects me to the primary, so I can go ahead and do whatever I need to do. There is a bunch of more options for replica set. 
make sure to check out the exercise files for links and more info. That was it for how you can create a replication to your database. If you learn it from this video, make sure to subscribe to receive notification about upcoming tutorials. Next, we're going to learn more about sharding. Be safe.